Good morning, this is Kevin Ring. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a very basic setup with a Vistumful Pixera media server. Pixera is broken down into four tabs, which are screens, mapping, compositing, and control. Needless to say, each tab has some pretty advanced features, but we're going to do a pretty high level overview just to uh, allow you to get some outputs going. One note with Pixera, uh, I highly recommend you have a mouse with the track wheel. Not required, but it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. And that's an email. My apologies. So with Pixera, we are able to add a grid or a floor to our visualizer here, our workspace, so we can work in a more 3D environment. To do so, the hotkey is G, G as in grid. Or more importantly, you can hit this uh, grid button up top. Now using my scroll wheel, I'm able to zoom in and out. If I press down on my scroll wheel, I can pan around. And if I hold the Alt key, Alt key on my keyboard, I can move around isometrically. All of my, uh, my library of screens, my screen objects is on the left hand side. I have displays, LED panels, and projection surfaces. For displays, we have generic 40-inch FHDs, UHDs. Uh, these are able to be changed in size, but the resolution will stay constant of 1920, 1080, as a television would. If I hit the delete key on my keyboard, it goes away. LED panels works pretty similar. For example, if I were to go to AppSim, let's do a A2 Pro. If I look at the specifications on the right hand side, I can see that each cabinet is 168 by 168 pixels. It's half meter, uh, pixel counts 28,224. I can drag my one cabinet into my workspace. And now I can set the panel array to be, oh, let's do 16 by 6. And now it builds the entire wall for me. Using, using the shift key, I can bind this to a specific axis. That way I can move just on the x axis or the y axis. And I see that my pixel count here is 2688 by 1008. Very cool. If I want to as well, I can add a panel angle. Let's do a 5 degree curvature. And what's nifty now is we're going to note that on the mesh, the curvature is actually occurring in between the cabinets. As we know, for the most part, LED itself does not curve, so this is uh, pretty cool. And as always, delete. We'll delete that. Uh, I'm going to add a generic flat screen. This is more for projection surfaces now. I can make it any size aspect ratio I want. That looks pretty cool. If I go to my mapping tab, I'm able to add projectors as well as map my displays to physical outputs on my GPU. On the left hand side, we have a library of projector manufacturers. We have a whole bunch of them in focus, Barco, Christie, Panasonic, Epson, Canon, and much more. And of course, if you, you can favorite them to find them quickly and easily. Uh, I'm partial to the Panasonic RZ 12K nice projector. So I can add two of them onto my screen. If I select one projector, it goes to the uh, properties tab on the right hand side. And what's nifty is because we told it that it is a Panasonic RZ12K, RZ excuse me, I can actually add an actual Panasonic lens. So over here I can do um, an LE6 for example. And it's going to show me what that lensing will look like with this. Otherwise I can do generic. Now this will be really cool to help line up these projectors quickly. If I select both of them and do Control Alt A, let me do that again. Select both of them, do Control Alt A. It's going to put the projectors to their optimal throw distance based off the lensing to fill the screen and do the uh, data doubling and overlap for me. Nifty. I'll go ahead and just add a few more screens just to say I did. 
I'm going to add some projectors to them. Control A, Control A, and that's good enough for right now. At this point, I can go to my compositing tab. And the compositing tab is where I'm going to actually build out my show. Here's where I'm going to set up all my layers, all my cues, uh, and all the fun things. On the left hand side, once again, we have our resources. And with the media, I have some built in content that Pixero is generous enough to donate. If I drag and drop a piece of content onto a screen, it automatically adds a layer and buses that layer to the appropriate screen. Now we see that we're not filling 69 content on a 3 to 1 aspect ratio screen, but I can right click the layer, go to scale unit mode, and go to fill home screen. I'll take two other pieces of content, drag them onto my 16.9 screens, and notice it creates a layer for each one. Like most playback engines, the spacebar will start the playback. Very cool. If I want to create a crossfade, I can do that in real time. Back this up. I'm going to add another piece of content onto my timeline. Well, let's watch this third screen. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's this one here. Yes, here it is. So now it's doing the crossfade for me automatically. If I want a longer crossfade, I'll make it longer. If I want it shorter, I'll make it shorter. Very cool. Above the layers, we're going to have what we call our marker track. If I double click the marker track, I can create a, a marker. The marker can be a play marker, pause marker, or jump marker. I'm going to do a jump marker and have it jump to position 000 on my timeline. So now, if I were to play, well, you can even add content back. If I were to play my content, I see the green arrow indicating it's going to jump here, and now I have a seamless loop. Nifty. So all that's fun. What Pixera also allows you to do very, very easily is take one piece of content and span all of my screens. So I'm going to take the same piece of content, add it to my home screen. Uh, and if I click on the layer in the screen, I can do what's called in-screen compositing. What's cool is all of the screens share an inner compositing area. So I can actually move the content in between the negative space to all three of my screens. Now the cool thing is, if I want to get a better view of this, I can use this button up here, which is called Dive into the Inner Compositor. And now I can see all three screens from their inner perspective. I can take my content, and now I'm going to hit S, S, to store this new change. Dive out, and now I have the content spanning all three screens with the negative space going between it. Very, very cool. If I want to as well, I can select the clip, go into the play mode, hit free loop, and now as long as my playhead is on this layer, or this container, it's going to play endlessly and endlessly. So obviously Pixera is an incredibly, platform, uh, incredibly powerful platform. There's a lot more to it than this really quick overview, but at the very least, this will allow you to get up and running and start playing and having fun and exploring the software. Remember, the demo version available at pixera.one is completely free to use. Everything I have done in this demonstration has been utilized in the demo version. So please explore, create, uh, have some fun, and I will make a couple of videos that go deeper into uh, the workflow. But that said, please check out uh, Pixera and A.V. Stumpel's official YouTube channel, and you're going to see some really, really amazing tutorial videos. Great. Well, uh, happy uh, media servering. <laughs>